All right. <clears throat> Let's see what we can do here. Um, you guys wanted to know something about how I did some of the sounds and things on um, this song. So Grant in particular was asking about his drum sounds. So let's just let's see if we can get the song to play. Okay. There's the whole thing. Okay, so let's just solo the drums. And you wanted to know what I did. So the overall <coughs> drum sound is running through the slate virtual mix just with a preset on drum bass thick. So I'll turn this off. That snare is still there. That one just saturates it. Um, we got some EQ settings, but it's mostly just me doing a little dip here and a little rise there. I haven't done anything special. I think I think this is to take a ping out because there's still a ping in the snare. You know, let's, let's see. Um, oh no, it's a little box. Okay. This is all just on the bus. Um, and then I've been using this limiter called the wall, which it just really brings out the snare really well. And when you start playing louder, it becomes a big deal. All right. So that's what's going on in the master. Um, the kick. Oh, let's see, the kick I brought up by 8 dB, first of all, because it's really quiet. Um, just again, use the preset here, power kick. I mean, solo the kick so we can hear that. So it just brings it forward a little bit. Um, snare top. All right, here's where I played with you. So, first thing is this transient designer. So let's just get the snare on it. Now, this is cheating to listen to it this way. We really should listen to the snare like that. But if I take the transient out, so there it is out. So it's just got a tail, and I just shorten the tail. And then there's a little bit of EQ going on, a little bit of compression. Um, my own EQ afterwards. Hey, look, same dip. Oh, that's the drum bus. That's why. Okay. Sorry. So, yeah. So a snare setting. Again, the transient design is doing more than anything. Um, same kind of dip. There's the pong or the pop. So, um, and as usual, look, 165, 2180. I'm sure that if we do that, we'll find that there's an octave or some sort going on there. Um, and then I threw this compressor at the end of it. This is only here because I do this soft distortion, and I've got a limiter on there just because when I crank everything up, the snare sometimes will pop too much. Um, just drums as a whole. I need to turn them up to get the effect I need, and then I've got to put a limiter on them to, to stop them. But I'm only at a 50% mix here, too, so it's it, it's not all the way stopping it. But I love this particular built-in compressor on Logic and this soft distortion. Um, I'm going to have to start over. All right. So, and I'm pretty sure on the snare bottom, you were asking if I use the snare bottom. I am. And it's largely, it's the same, it's the same settings. Yeah, it's the same settings. So I used that together. But if we take the snare there now and just bring in the overheads. So obviously you're going to ask me what I do to the overheads. So the overheads is just EQ. Nothing. Nothing. Took the low end out and raised a little bit up with the cymbals. Sorry, I can't do that when you start playing loud, but I can do that on this song because you're so laid back. So what else is making your snare work? Well, it's the room, of course. And there it is. There came your thump. And <clears throat> this is the Acme, which is my favorite compressor. I can't use it real strong, although you'll see in a minute. Yeah, see, it's only on 40%. It is there as a saturator more than anything. Um, I can 
Droid sounds. Again, when we get to the automation in just a second, we'll see what I'm talking about. So add all that together. And there you go. All right. So there is what's going on with drums. So now, what did I do to the mix? And what did I do to the drums at the end? Let me turn the solo off. Let's see where we are. Okay. Turn on automation. We can make it happen. One of the things it did, it took the instrument. Um, all right, so the easier way to do this is this one. All right, so I bust together the instruments and the vocals. And when I bust together the instruments and the vocals, it is the instruments except for the drums, and it is the vocals, just the vocal buses. So reverb and delay are sitting out going to stereo master. That becomes important in a second. So from an instrument standpoint, I have a few things going on here. Um... That doesn't look quite right, but let's see. Huh, maybe it is. All right. Um, oh, yeah, I know what I did. All right. So there's instruments. We're going to stop right here and double check that because phase mistress, mistress should be off. Ah, okay, phase mistress is there, but the mix is at 0%. Ah, there it is. So, this is an automation curve coming up for the phaser. So the first thing I did here, too, drums. Come back to that in a second. This turns the drums off. Vocals are just going. The instrument, this mix bus, is the thing you care about. So let's just get up here. All right, so I start phasing it. It's real subtle. All right, so there goes the whole mix phasing. And then mix that guitar phase. It's only at 50% now, and it's starting to get weirder. So then, I start panning everything to the right. And there goes the music going to the right. And now, I start the low cut going, and I'm sweeping up a low pass filter. There it goes. So that thing's sweeping up. And see, the vocals are going away, but now listen. Listen to that reverb. So I never turned the volume down. I just panned it, and I EQ'd it out. So you've just got that faint echo, and when I add the drums back, you're going to hear that it just it's completely destroyed. All right, so let's go back do the drums real quick. So this is where things get fun. From the drums, I am back here. Okay, see the Acme is off. All right. And the imager is off. So let's open up the Acme. And let's open up the imager. All right. So let's just solo the drums now. Yeah, it's just your normal drum sound. <coughs> Acme's on and the imager kicks in. And I start sliding the stereo eyes up. The drums are going to very subtly get wider. Now, all the while, Acme is here. The wet dry mix is at zero. All right, so I'm starting to make you really wide. Now you can hear it going wide. Here comes the distortion. And I did it on the whole mix. I thought about just doing it only on the room, but it was more fun this way. 
Okay, see how wide that got? The snares are starting to push out. And now all of a sudden you're bullet, bullet the blue sky there with the drum kit. And now you're just a big distorted mess. And I'm faking the stereo field like crazy. So now you're really wide and you're really distorted. And keep in mind, I've only got this thing at 65%. You should hear what happens if I take it to 100. So there's your drum sound. And then I fade you out. Right. But if we put it all together, we'll come back, and we're going to turn the solo off. We're going to minimize that. And we're going to find where this happens. Yeah, all right. So what you get is this. Back to the beginning. Ah, I'm an idiot sometimes. I'm going to turn the automation off so I can see where I am. So, sorry, turn back here. Out it fades here. It doesn't. I didn't fade the master here. I faded the master. The master. Okay. Oh no, I did fade it. So there you go. You were asking what I did. That's what I did. All right. I'll uh, turn this into a YouTube video that's smaller than the half a gig that it is here right now. Cool. Thanks, guys. Bye.